Hi, I'm Lawrence Bernstein, a professional speechwriter, um, and I run greatspeechwriting.co.uk. And irrespective of the sort of speech that you're going to give, there are two or three key things to bear in mind. Firstly, there is nothing to beat preparation. Um, and hopefully you're not watching this 24 hours before you're due to give your speech, but the more time you leave yourself, the better. Second of all, don't worry about speaking for too long. Often a five minute speech is much, much more powerful and impactful than a 20 minute one. And brevity is often the key. And finally, although a lot of the, the videos that I've created are about writing a speech, please remember that you can't think about writing and delivering separately. They're one and the same thing. You're writing to make the speech easy to deliver. And if you think of it that way, then the thing should work. So I've got some advice on how to start thinking about writing your best man speech. Um, there's obviously a lot of pressure on you on the basis that you are expected to be incredibly funny and witty and uh, make people cry with laughter and with emotion. Um, and so let's take it back to basics. You're sitting in a room writing the thing and for starters you need to split what you've got to say into two areas. The things you have to say, the boxes you have to tick, and then the things that you might say and the things that are going to sort of bring your speech to life. Now there are only three things as a best man that you have to say on your, on your sort of typical traditional wedding. Number one is to respond to a toast on behalf of the bridesmaids. Number two is to thank the hosts um, on behalf of yourself and all the other guests who are there for putting on such a fantastic day. And the third one is to finish with a toast to the bride and groom. Now, within that framework, there are any number of ways you can go about the more interesting part of the speech. And writing the thing, the most important thing to start with from the very, very start is relevance. Now, this is a recurring theme in any type of speech that you're going to write. And really, the speech needs to be relevant, not just to the groom, um, who's obviously going to be the, the butt of, the mo of most of your jokes and most of your content, but also relevant in a way that the rest of the people in the room actually know what you're going on about. Because there is always a danger of reeling off stories from nights out you've had in pubs and group holidays you've had together, where the, the sort of cliquey nature of the occasion and the jokes are just going to pass many people by. So relevance is absolutely key. And the, probably the best way to avoid that and to ease your way into writing the thing so you, you get a good balance is to look at humour on one hand and then sincerity on the other. You're trying to sum up a friendship with somebody that has probably lasted many, many years and you don't just want to start going straight into a string of jokes. Um, and so the fact that it is an honour to be this guy's friend, the fact that you've had some fantastic times together, the fact that you trust him and that that actually at the, the, at the end of the day this is all about friendship rather than making fun of someone in public are a fantastic way of setting you off and getting the audience on board. But when it comes to the humorous side, um, yes you probably do want to talk about a few outrageous things that have gone on in your lives and tell some stories that will probably surprise people and maybe even shock them. But please don't fall into the trap um, of going the wrong end of what I call the, the speech riskometer. Don't start telling jokes that will embarrass people, um, stories that are going to make his relatives or new relatives wonder what they've got involved in, and stories that are actually going to be more than, than do more than create a laugh, but are actually going to create humiliation all round. Save those for the bar afterwards and stick to things that are straight down the middle and which anybody in that room will enjoy and not just the guys who have gone on the stag do. Um, a great trick in pulling all this stuff together is actually to look for a theme, um, something that may be a hobby of his, something that the two of you have shared, um, an experience that many people in the room will know that this guy's gone through, and maybe use that theme to pull together the rest of your stories. And so, for example, the fact that he was obsessed with um, comics as a small boy might give you the, the opportunity com to compare some of the things he's done in later life and look at them in, the, in view of the fact that he was trying to actually, um, he's spent 30 years trying to relive the life of Dennis the Menace or Desperate Dan or somebody else who, who everyone in that room will understand. And so that theme can provide you with, with, with what I like to think of as the cement that pulls together the various bricks of this speech. And if there's a story about him out on a stag do and a story about him out in a pub and a story about the time he failed his driving test, 
then the theme can pull them back into something that enables you to have a structure and something that people can, can sort of understand and stick with throughout the speech. The final tips that I'd give you at this stage are first of all, keep the thing shorter rather than longer. Don't waffle. Try and keep your sentences as short as possible and as punchy as possible. Um, and if that means that in, on paper the speech looks like it could be a little bit staccato, don't worry. Because when you read it out loud and you speak slowly and you emphasise it properly, then those are often the keys to creating something that's really memorable and really easy to deliver. Um, but if you'd like to know more, please have a look at my website, greatspeechwriting.co.uk, and feel free to give me a call if you'd like to discuss it in person.